there. I want to thank you for making community groups a priority. I'm so excited about this lesson. We're going to be talking about getting help along the way. So let's just dive into it. I have a theory I'd like to test on you today. I believe that one of the most difficult things in life is to know what you don't know. What do you think about that? You think it's true? See, if you're a parent, how could you have known that you knew nothing about parenting until the day your first child was born? And if I'm being honest, I still know nothing about parenting. But I was the best parent before I had kids, if I'm being honest. But if you ever have done in some investing, you've probably made a mistake or two. How could you have known that you didn't know until you made that mistake that cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars? If you were a Marine, on the day you reported to boot camp, how could you have known that you knew nothing until your drill instructor so politely demonstrated your ignorance to you? We're learning tonight that direction determines destination. That getting from point A to point B involves more than just wishing or hoping or dreaming about it. It actually involves a path. We've been doing life long enough to know that trusting our hearts when making a decision, it can be tough because our hearts often lie to us. Like the saying that I once read, follow your heart, but take your brain with you. We don't always do that last part, take our brain with us. Have we, learned, we have learned that one of the easiest ways to make a great decision is to ask ourselves the question, what story do I wanna tell about this part of my life years from now? How do I want that to write out? How do I wanna tell my kids the story of this? The lesson is about figuring out what you don't know. How do you do that? How do you discover what you don't know that you don't know so that you avoid potholes and pitfalls and falling into traps that you never even saw coming? Solomon, the author of Proverbs, tells us in Proverbs 15, 22, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So how can you know what you don't know? It sounds so funny even just saying that because how do you know what you don't know if you don't know, right? But in the scripture, it tells us you seek advice from advisors. Specifically, you seek the right advice from the right advisors. And here are a couple reasons why we as humans, sometimes we choose not to seek advice. Number one, we think we already know what we need to know. Now, if I can say this politely, that's ignorance. I remember growing up, and I don't remember what age we were, but my brother said at one point, and let me just interject, see, I'm not always the bad kid. Pastor always says, hey, Ashley this and Ashley that, but Chad, you know, Chad had his moment too. So, but I remember saying one, uh, hearing him saying one time, if I don't know it, it doesn't need to be known. And to this day, we still say that jokingly, like if I don't know it, it doesn't need to be known. So Tom, sometimes we think we know everything and so we don't ask or seek counsel. Number two, it feels better to have people think we know where we're going and to let them know, then to let them know, like, we don't have a clue. We'd rather think, oh yeah, we know what's going on. We know the direction. That, my friend, is pride. Number three, it's too much work to figure out how to get advice. That is laziness. The Bible calls this slothfulness, which is a word we don't use very much, but it is very descriptive. So sometimes we make plans without counsel. I would probably go and say oftentimes we do that. And those times, and when we've done that, it will fail. Or at least we wind up being less effective than we could have been. And at other times we get counsel, but we get inferior counsel because we take it from the wrong person. So we take the time to get the counsel, which is good, but here are a few, re few reasons why we don't seek wise counsel. And that's kind of what we're focusing on, not just seeking counsel, but seeking wise counsel. The first one is, it's easier to get advice from our friends. They get us, they understand us, they've been with us in this journey, they, figure, they know what we're going through, and they accept us how we are, and they're easily accessible because they're in our bubble, they're in our lives. Number two, it's easy to follow the herd. Well, how many times have we heard, everyone's doing it? And a lot of times, you know, everyone's doing it, but we take this route because, well, we don't have to think about it. 
We're just gonna do it because everybody's going left. So let's just go left. It's less I have less energy I have to put in. It's less thought I have to put into. So I'm gonna do that. But Solomon says, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. See, so wise people listen to counsel and get wiser. Discerning people listen to guidance and get further along in their path. Now let me tell you the secret to getting good counsel. Number one, knowing that you will always need good counsel. It's mind blowing, isn't it? We think, hey, we're in our 60s, we pretty much have done everything we want to do, but there's going to come a, light, a time in your life where you're going to have to seek counsel. Or maybe you're thinking, hey, I'm 18, I just graduated, I know all there is to know. And like my brother, right? If, it doesn't, if I don't know it, it doesn't need to be known. But knowing that you always will need to seek good counsel will keep that at the forefront of your mind. No one gets to the place where they no longer need wise counsel. We don't graduate out of that. We don't promote out of that. We will always need it. And knowing that you need it will get you further along. Number two, asking more than one person's advice. I'm guilty of this too, but oftentimes I think we go through a situation and we say, yes, I'm gonna seek counsel, I'm gonna ask for advice, but we go to the one person in our life that is going to tell us what we wanna hear so that we can be validated. Now we're not worrying, is the decision wrong or is it right or is it the wise thing to do? We're just going, hey, I'm gonna to go to my best friend, he or she's gonna tell me what I wanna hear, and then that's it. Then I can go on throughout my day, I did what the Bible said, my job here is done. But that's not how we wanna go about it. Proverbs 11, 14 says, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. I want victory in my life. I want it to be there. I want it to be attainable. So if I go back to the scripture, many advisors make that victory sure. Notice the word Solomon inserts before advisors in this proverb. Many advisors, not one, many. So that means you're going out, you're tapping into all your resources, you're figuring out different people to get advice from. Here's something that's going to sound really obvious to you because I know you guys are so smart. Most of the really important decisions in our life seem really important to you. Isn't that true? And most of those important decisions seem to have a sense of urgency to them. They're so important that they dominate your, your thinking, your feeling, you can't sleep at night. Whatever the situation is or whatever decisions you're trying to make, it's dominating. I mean, you could be in the kitchen cooking and it's dominating your thoughts. You could be at the dinner table with your family and you're overwhelmed about what's going on at work, a decision that needs to be made. They're with us all the time. So we want those decisions to be made as quickly as possible. I wanna be done with this. I wanna start sleeping. I wanna start being focused. I wanna be present with my family. But let's read Solomon's advice out loud. Many advisors make victory sure. Another point, not letting pride keep you from admitting what you don't know. Pride is a big thing that we as Christians deal with a lot because it's dying to our flesh saying, I don't know everything. I don't have it all figured out. So not letting pride keep you from admitting what you don't know. Pride only breeds quarrels but wisdom is found in those who take advice. That's Proverbs 13 and 10. That's the word of God telling you right there that pride was only gonna bring confusion and anger and frustration because you're not willing to put that pride down. But wisdom, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. So pride may be the number one enemy of the path you're on. Successful people are open to the fact that they don't know everything. They need to know and are quick to go to people who do. Solomon describes this in terms of the path in Proverbs 12, verse 15, when he says, the way of the fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. So we have to ask ourselves, the way of the fool seems right. There's so many times in our lives that we could say, well, I'm right, I'm justified. I could say this, I can do this. I can make this decision because one, two, three happened. Okay, so see what he's saying here, the way of a fool. Another way to put that would be the path. A fool seems right to him. So the way of the fool, the path that the fool is taking, it seems right to him. So a friend comes and says, I'm worried about the direction you're headed. 
And the fool says, you don't need to worry about me, I'm fine. But what does the wise man say when a friend says, I'm worried about you? He says, really? I'm so grateful that you care. Tell me what you're seeing, sit down with me, speak into my life. Another example, dad comes to his son and says, I'm worried about the, some of the habits that you're developing. The foolish son says, leave me alone, dad. I figured it out, I'm good. But the wise son says, tell me what you're seeing, dad. Tell me what you're seeing. A mom comes to her daughter and says, honey, I think your behavior could get you into some trouble someday. And the foolish daughter, daughter says, mom, you're so old fashioned. You don't get it. You're not my age right now. But the wise daughter would say, mom, tell me what you're seeing. I wanna be wise. A supervisor comes to an employee and says, I know this is none of my business, but can I give you some advice? And the foolish employee says, if it's none of your business, then mind your own business. The wise employee says, I need all the advice and counsel I can get. These are just a few examples of seeing wise and foolish decisions and statements that we can make. And number four, my last point here, is taking counsel from those who have been where you want to go. Your life and mine, we're on paths. Paths that either lead us toward where we want to go or pull us away from where we want to go. And if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter which way you take. You can sit here and say, I have a path. I don't know where that path is gonna take me. So you go left or right, it doesn't matter. But if you know that you wanna please God and you know you wanna be wise in your counsel, the secret to getting good counsel is first knowing that you need it. Put the pride down, admit, say, hey, I'm, I'm waving my white flag here, I need some help. Then seeking it from multiple, reliable, godly sources. I'm gonna repeat that because sometimes we do multiple reliable, but we skip the godly source. So seeking it from multiple, reliable, godly sources and truly listening to those sources to learn what you didn't even know you didn't know. And most importantly, taking counsel from the right people, from people we respect, who have arrived where we wanna go with their character and their reputations intact. We see the fruits of their labor and we see the fruits of them making wise decisions. Go to those people. I don't wanna necessarily take financial you know, advice from someone that just filed bankrupt bankruptcy because I wanna see, hey, where's the decisions that you've made that made you fruitful? So there's a real difference between the right road and the easy road. The easy road is the arrogant road. It doesn't seek counsel or ignores the counsel that it gets or seeks counsel only from those who are easy to get to. The wise man and the wise woman, which is you and me, we seek counsel from wise people. We listen to it, we heed to it, and we walk a path that leads to where they want to go. And sometimes you have to go the extra mile to find those people. You have to step out and not be afraid to ask for help. And I heard this a long time ago. It says, you know why we go the extra mile? It's not crowded there. There's elbow room. But where the extra mile is, that's where you find wise people, the successful people, the reliable people. Imagine for a minute what your life would be like if you developed the habit, not of being impulsive in your decision-making and not of being indecisive either, but of counseling older, wiser, more successful people than you. Hard to believe, right? Because we know it all, but not after this lesson. Parents, imagine what you could learn and what heartache we could save for our children if we counseled from successful seasoned parents. Students, imagine how much better you will enter the work world if you link arms from time to time with someone older, someone you admire, and ask their advice on things like how to study, how to approach homework, which classes to take, and what college or graduate school should I attend? Employees, imagine the steps you could save if you sought advice from people of character and success in your field and asked for guidance once in a while. New believer, imagine if you linked up with a seasoned Christian that could remind you that God will get you through your toughest time if you hold on. It wouldn't be that hard, would it? It's almost like you get to know the end of the story by tapping into these resources and advice while you're in the third chapter of the book. So some of us wonder why our plans fail so often. Honestly, some of our plans have failed because we have sabotaged them. But many of our plans fail because they weren't the best plans. God's word says, plans fail for lack of counsel, 
but with many advi advisors, they succeed. So what will you do with this little bit of advice I've given you today? Here's my counsel. Number one, come back next week for community group because we're still impacting this great lesson. Number two, ask God to show you the counselors he has for you. Number three, seek advice this week from someone who is where you want to be. Three things. And what you do with those three things in the next seven days until we get together for community group is on you and your heart and where you want to go and the path that you're on. I want to thank you for being with us this week, and I cannot wait to worship with you this Sunday. We will see you in a few days. God bless.